Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to show you a picture of something. Now this picture is a little bit scary, but bear with me here. So this is a picture of a ceiling. And you might be thinking, well, what's so scary about a ceiling? But this is not an ordinary ceiling. This is what's called a drop ceiling. So sometimes when we build buildings, there's a ceiling, but we need to run a bunch of stuff next to it. We need to run wires and pipes and things like that, HVAC, ventilation and stuff like that. And it's kind of stuff people don't want to look at. So what a lot of buildings do is they kind of have these struts kind of hanging down and they, they have the ability to kind of put pieces of styrofoam up so you don't have to see all that. That's called a drop ceiling. The, the real ceiling is higher than this. And so if you took the ceiling and you kind of pushed up one of these tiles, you'd see stuff above it. You'd see stuff like this. You'd see wires and HVAC, uh, pipes, insulation, and so on. And so you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal about that? But the problem is there's no airflow between this kind of space above these tiles and the space below. And so if there's a fire that starts, it'll just spread and it'll spread and it'll spread everywhere and you won't notice it. If there's a gas leak up there, the gas will leak, you're not gonna smell it. The gas will leak and it'll spread everywhere. It'll get everywhere up there and you won't even notice it. Smoke will get everywhere. So the space above a drop ceiling is called the plenum. And the plenum is actually a very dangerous area in buildings. If you read about fires, like the famous uh, Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire and all, this, all these big fires, they all seem to happen in these kind of enclosed areas. And this is actually a very common scenario for fires, is that you have an enclosed area that no one's watching, you know, fire gets up there, a whole bunch of smoke gets up, and then there's an explosion, everything gets out. So plenum areas are very dangerous. And people know this. And so when we design systems, when we design systems that get deployed in buildings, we need to pay a lot of attention to how they burn, how resistant they are to fire, how we can protect them, and things like that. So because of this, there's a lot of ratings that are applied to devices and cables and things like that, where people have studied and come up with regulations for how these things are constructed and rules to construct them in a way that they're resistant to burning. So in particular, I'm showing you a set of ratings for cable. If you go out and you buy ethernet cable or electrical cable, and so on, use it in your devices or to connect things with wires and so on, you're gonna see ratings like this a lot. So these are some very common ones. So I wanted to kind of run through these real quick and give you a sense of what they are. Let's start with the first one. So plenum rating is the toughest rating for cable. It has to be because you're deploying these wires up in your plenum, you're not gonna see them. If they catch fire and they burn, you're not gonna notice. Wires are a great way for fires to spread because the fire kind of goes around and it catches on a cable it's just like a run for the fire. The fire will just kind of track along the cable and spread all over the place. So if you deploy wires in your plenum, you want plenum rated cable because they're jacketed with fire retardant plastic. They're made with plastic that doesn't smoke when it burns. It resists burning. And these cables are also resistant to pulling as well. Because if you deploy a cable, you kind of throw it up there and you kind of pull on it and pull on it it might stretch out the copper inside the cable. And that's really bad because when copper gets small and gets thin, it can't carry as much electricity. And when you have a lot of electricity going over a small conductor, it heats up. Bigger conductors don't heat as much. So you pull your wire more and more, it'll heat up more and more, it could lead to fire. So because of this, plenum cables also include a rope or a polymer filament inside of the wire with a high tensile strength and that can help support pulling, you know, people kind of pulling on it, and also dangling cables. You have a cable that kind of pulls down, it'll support that. Plenum wires are also solid cable instead of stranded. So you want a nice big thick piece of cable so it can carry a lot of electricity so it's not gonna heat up, cause fires. It's not stranded, so it's not meant to be bent, but you're, you're running it up in your plenum. It's not like you're gonna go up there every day and move it around. It's meant to be deployed once, so solid cable is fine for there. There's also a lot of restrictions on the type of chemicals that can be used to manufacture the sheath. And these chemicals prevent fire and uh, reduce smoke, so that's good. But they're also more expensive. It reduces flexibility. 
you know, if you take a plenum cable and you bend it, the outer sheath will turn white a little bit. That doesn't happen with regular Ethernet cables. Plenum cables also have a higher bend radius. You've got to think about where you're running them. You're, gonna, you're not going to make sharp corners or sharp turns. You kind of have to gradually run them. And because of this, they have a higher cost to manufacture and a higher cost to uh, deploy as well. It requires more training to deploy. So this is plenum rated. There's some other rating levels as well. So plenum is kind of the most expensive. There's also other levels like riser cable. So riser cable is cable that rises between your floors. It's what connects your first floor to your second floor and your second floor to your third floor in your home. These ratings apply to you know, electrical cable, network cable, and so on. So riser cable needs to be fire resistant as well because if your first floor catches on fire, you don't want that, that fire getting up to your second floor. You want to contain the fire. So riser cable is resistant to fire as well. There's also uh, general purpose cable, residential cable, and so on. These are kind of lower ratings. There's also low smoke zero halogen cable as well. So this is cable where it's manufactured to eliminate toxic gases when it burns. It's designed for enclosed environments where you have people where it might be hard to evacuate because, you know, if your building catches fire, you don't want everybody getting smoke in their eyes and they can't see, you know, breathing toxic gases and they pass out because they can't get out of the building. You want to use low smoke zero halogen cable because when it burns, it'll burn nicely. It won't emanate all these toxic gases. It's good for enclosed areas where you have poor ventilation or if you're around sensitive equipment, which can be damaged by chemicals. So what I've done here is I've, I've talked about these different ratings for cables. These ratings apply to network cables, electrical cables. They apply to device construction as well. So when you construct your devices and your cabling, it's important to pay attention to these ratings, to think about your device and how it will act in normal operation and how it will also act in emergency scenarios when it burns.